This is the story of Mary. It was 2005, and I had been booked to do a historical storytelling job in Abingdon, Virginia. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar, Abingdon, Virginia is located in a part of the state that we native Virginians refer to as Swaba, or Southwest Virginia. Now, I mention that because of this proximity to Johnson City, Tennessee, which is less than an hour away, and also where I attended graduate school. So I knew driving from Atlanta to Johnson City was only four hours, and getting to Abingdon would be just one more additional hour, so it was a doable trip by, by car. Now, Abingdon, Virginia is known for quite a few things. Not only being a historic town and a good place for antiquing and shopping, it also has the Bar Theater. It's known for its historic bed and breakfasts. But more important than anything else, it's known for its ghosts. Well, after traveling to Johnson City and getting to the outskirts of the city and close to the state line, I decided to stop off at a rest area and give my host a call and let them know I was within 30 minutes or so of arriving. Well, they gave me last minute directions to make sure I had everything correct to get there. And upon arriving, I wasn't impressed. I saw uh, where I was going to stay, which was a two-story brick home, looked like 18th century style with um, columns, Greek columns. It also had brick archways or brick arches over the windows. And it also had an oyster shell walkway leading up to the front door. Well, I arrived at the front door, knocked on the door, and was greeted by Mr. and Mrs. Jones, who were the host. And upon crossing the threshold, we exchanged pleasantries, and they asked me, you know, well, based off looking at what you see here, will these accommodations be okay? And I looked around and saw uh, the house just, you know, from just from my initial impression, and I said, well, you know, it looks fine to me, you know, as long as there are no ghosts here. <laughs> I laughed at my joke, but they didn't. Well, they continued to give me a tour of the house, showing me around, and I did notice some things that stood out. Number one, there was a theme of blue throughout the house, along with pictures of water, women in water, and of course, there were the historical artifacts. Some of them included like a, a set of wool combs that you would use to comb sheep hair. There was the old fashioned mortar and pestle that a doctor would use to mix medicine. There was even a butter churn I saw there as well. But of all these things that I noticed in the house, none stood out more than say the mannequins, the female mannequins who were dressed to the nines in their 18th century wares, from their shoes to their skirts to the corsets and the bodices. Why, there was even one there who had lace gloves and holding a fan. It was everything you would expect to find in a well-dressed woman of the 18th century, except there was one thing missing. None of them had a head. Well, they took me to my room, which was actually on a third floor at the bottom where I'd be staying for the weekend, which was fine with me because I had a private entrance with two French doors that led out to a courtyard. There also was a king-size canopy bed. There was an armoire with a flat screen TV. Off to the right, there was the walk-in bathroom and also a place to wash my clothes, a small private laundry. Oh, and I almost forgot, there were two more mannequins on either side of the armbar facing me in my bed, of course, without their heads. Well, after I got settled downstairs, I went up to the main level where the guest had, where the host, that is, had prepared a meal for me. And as we talked and chatted and got to know one another, um, they told me to give them a call if um, anything, if I needed anything, or if there was going to be a sudden change of plans um, for, the, for the weekend. Well, after they left, I went back downstairs to my room and prepared myself for a night's rest. I went into the bathroom and I flossed and brushed my teeth, um, came back to the bed, turned on the TV. And as I was watching the TV, that's when I heard, 
And I realized it was the faucet in the bathroom. So I went to the bathroom, turned it off, make sure it was off, came back to the bed, started watching TV again. I heard it once more. So I got out of bed a second time, went back to the bathroom, made sure I firmly turned it off this time. Then I let it go, went back to bed, and this time I didn't hear it anymore and drifted off to sleep. Well, next morning came and I had a day in between of me doing my uh, historic, historical storytelling job. So I decided to take the day to go do some touring and maybe check out some things in and around town. Well, after I'd um, taken a quick shower and um, brush my teeth again, I was getting ready on the bed to put on my shoes just to step outside. And that's when I heard I thought to myself, what is going on with this faucet? It just constantly drips. So I went into the bathroom, turned it off again, waited. Okay, I got it this time. Finished getting ready and went on out the door at about town. Well, as I was out and about, I did some of the things I wanted to do. I did a little shopping, some antiquing. Uh, toured the town. I actually even had an opportunity to see a historical reenactment myself. And then, just by happenstance, I, I ran into the host, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, and um, they said, well, how are your accommodations overnight so far? And I almost thought about telling them about the first of I said, you know, that might be a little nitpicky. It's not a huge deal. I can, I can, I can manage. It's just a, one more day that I'm going to be here. So I told him everything was fine, and we went our separate ways. Well, that night, when I um, arrived back at the bed and breakfast, I fixed myself fixed myself a meal, um, went to the computer, uh, did some internet surfing, and of course, the screensaver on the computer was in line with everything in the house. It was a picture of water and a mermaid in that water. So after I finished surfing, I went back downstairs and um, drifted off to sleep. Well, the next morning was the day of the event where I was going to perform. So I went in the bathroom early and got the shower up all nice and hot and steamy and entered the shower and started cleaning myself up. Well, as I was doing that, I could have sworn on the other side of the curtain, there was a huge dark shadow and it just suddenly came up out of nowhere so i pulled the curtain back and nothing was there and then i realized silly me that that's just the curtains over the window by the washer and dryer and the sun just cast a shadow on the inside of the bathroom so i finished cleaning up went to the bedroom got dressed and ready and went out and did my performance for the day well, that evening when I came back, I um, had a, a meal again and went back and retired for the evening because the next day I was going to leave. But for some reason, that bedroom just wouldn't get warm. No matter what I did to the thermostat to turn up the temperature, it was always, it was just icy cold. So I reached into the armoire and got a blanket and put on the bed. Then I realized I hadn't brushed my teeth, so I went back in the bathroom, brushed my teeth, and came back and jumped under the covers of the bed. And that's when I heard it yet again. Troop, troop, troop. I was really frustrated now because I had to get out from under this comfortable comforter and go back to the bathroom, which I did. And as I'd done the times before, firmly turned the water off and went back to my bed, pulled the covers up over me and tried to go to sleep. But yet and still, I still heard it. Troop, troop, troop. And it was really agitating now because I just couldn't fall asleep. No matter how many times I turned on my left side or my right side or put a pillow over my ears, I could not sleep. 
So I sat there and tried to doze off and I was doing a pretty good job of dozing, of fading in and out, dozing off. But then as I was doing that, it seemed like every time those mannequins on either side of that armoire were just getting closer and closer and closer and closer. And this is in between those trip, trip, trip. I'm seeing the mannequins get closer and closer and closer and closer. And at one point, I just, I just jumped up, took the blanket off, got on my clothes, went to my car, and drove out of town. I went down the interstate and went clean across the state lines and drove to the first rest area in Tennessee and stayed there the entire night. Well, morning came, and I knew the hosts were going to be there at the bed and breakfast waiting for me to check out. So I made a beeline back to the bed and breakfast, packed all my things up, and sure enough, soon as I finished, here come the hosts um, to the bed and breakfast. When they said, well, how were things this weekend? I said, oh, it couldn't have been better. Best stay in the world. I said, I really enjoyed my stay here at the bed and breakfast. And then my mind told me to make mention of the faucet, so I did, and says, but, um, you know, there is one thing you might want to take a look at. You know, that faucet in the bathroom, it did leak, it did, um, it did continue to drip, I mean, over the course of the days I was here. It wasn't a big deal, but I do know, having a background in construction, that, you know, a leaky faucet can lead to a, a very high bill, water bill. And the host, Mr. Jones, paused for a minute. Then he says, well, we probably should have told you soon. That's not a leaky faucet. We believe that's our ghost Mary. You see, about 100 years ago, she was three years old, and she drowned in the tub. And after hearing that, a cold chill went down my spine. Now everything made sense. The headless mannequins, the headless mannequins, the constant theme of blue, water, and women all throughout the house, and of course that constant trip, trip, trip of the faucet. I bid them goodbye. I left Abingdon, Virginia, that bed and breakfast. And I have not returned since then. The story of Mary. Thank you.